Now it's time for the second ingredient, air. Powerful, compressed air. At Bretton Woods, four air compressors powered by 1,000 horsepower electric motors generate up to 5,000 cubic feet per minute of compressed air to send to the snow guns on the mountain. Diesel is used at some resorts to power air compressors. One type of gun, a fan gun, has its own built-in compressor that requires an electric source on the mountain. With all this, it's easy to see how modern resorts can run fuel bills in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and electric bills over a million for a single season. But it's the necessary cost of meeting the growing expectations of today's skiers and snowboarders. With today's uh, standards of, of snow conditions and what people are starting to be accustomed to, um, you know, a $1,000 pair of skis, they don't want to hit any rocks, they don't want to see any grass, uh, they don't want to ski on any ice. When we have to talk to people for hiking the mountain with no ticket, they say, what do I need a lift ticket for? I'm not riding the lift. With labor and energy costs, we're right around $900 to $1,000 an hour to make snow. So, and we're logging in, oh, anywhere from probably four, four to 500 hours of snowmaking. So, it adds up quick. Today's snowmaker is faced with the dilemma of balancing a growing demand for quality with the need to keep skiing affordable, which means conserving energy and manpower. They're meeting that challenge with the use of ever-improving technology. There hasn't been a ton of natural snow around here for the last few weeks. There was earlier in the year. And the quality of the snow right now is like it's been snowing nonstop for the last three weeks, which is just a testament to how incredible the snowmaking is. Today's snowmaker has a lot of tools at his disposal. The traditional snow gun, known as an air water gun, carburetor gun, or land gun, requires a lot of compressed air, so it's relatively energy inefficient but it's mobile and is better at making snow at marginal temperatures than other guns. Tower guns are a newer technology. They use a third to a quarter of the compressed air as land guns and they make a higher quality snow at optimal temperatures. Because of increased hang time, the snow crystals have a longer time to develop before they hit the ground. Hand guns are another technology that resorts use to maximize both snow quality and energy efficiency. Uh, this particular gun is a 25 horse motor up in the fan and then a 5 horse compressor. So we're looking at 30 horse to run this one gun. Uh, the 30 horse, uh, we can do 30 gallons a minute when we fire it up with the first set of banks. One of the small guns, you're looking at close to 100 horse to be able to produce snow out of that and not have as much water coming out. So the big difference with the fan gun is instead of just mixing the air in the water, it, it nucleates it. So what it does is it it mixes air and little water particles, which come out like ice crystals on your hand. And they go out the outside of that ring. And then there's about six, 700 little nozzles in the fan gun that put out the water, which adheres to the nucleated crystals. Not unlike the real world, where moisture particles adhere to dust particles in the air. That makes your snow flake, and down comes the snow. We've got this big, open, wide area here, you know, and, 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 and for manpower, uh, and uh, labor and grooming to push the snow up into this whole area. These guns here really throw the distance. There's three different banks on that gun. We have the always-on nozzles and then three other banks that we can put throw on as, as the temperatures get colder. So we're looking at from 14 gallons a minute starting up to 80 gallons a minute at the top end. We can open up a fan gun trail in 50 hours of snowmaking. We've got the capabilities that in two, three days we could run around this whole mountain and pretty much dust the whole hill. I know because we've done it. And by this time, like two, three days are over, we've got the whole mountain covered with nice, fresh four to six inches of good snow. But even with the latest technology, making great snow requires human expertise. Mike, what do you got for a temperature right there at the pump house? 13. 10-4, like 13 degrees at the pump house, thanks. And if it's colder, you put more water in, and a little less air. If it's warmer out, you put more air, less water. How do you figure out what, what, what changes to make in terms of that mixture that goes in there? When a snowmaker goes out underneath the gun, he just puts his arm and goes underneath the plume, checks the snow, to get the consistency that he wants. What kind of consistency are you looking for? Just a little tacky on your coat, but sticks a little bit and then brushes right off. If it's, if it's wet, when you, you get it caught in the folds, you squeeze it up, but it's, it's just breaking back up again. Okay. So it's pretty dry. I'm gonna go give us one more bank, one more bank of water, and then we're using, then we're maxing that gun right out. In addition to temperature and humidity, other weather conditions play a factor in snowmaking. 
Tower guns are permanently mounted so that prevailing northwest winds drift the snow across the trail. But sometimes the prevailing winds aren't always there, and uh, which means we can't run those guns when the winds are coming from the south or the east. So we, we use the, the smaller land guns at that point to pull them out into the trail and we'll let the snow drift over, uh, over the areas where the wind is, is taking it. There are lots of variables to overcome in achieving the type of snow you want. Sometimes the type of snow you want is a variable in itself. Beginning of the year, we, we're what we call base snow. Yep. We're, we're making a little bit wetter, heavier, tackier snow. Move that around. And we have to move that around. Right. Uh, now that we're open, um, we make a lighter snow that you can ski right through it. You can ski while the gun's on. It's just like powder coming out of the sky. Another variable is the mountain. Because you know that like the trail over there gets all the sun in the world in the spring. So we make that one six, seven feet deep. On the other hand, some of these back trails are nice and shady, so you don't need quite as much snow on them. People are building elements, they're building jumps, they're building, you know, tubing parks. And those aren't just a case of covering the ground with a little bit of snow. You've got to, in some cases, we've got spots where there's 20, 25 feet of man-made snow on the hill. Making the snow is one thing. Getting it into perfect condition for skiing, well, that takes yet another step. Uh, grooming is a very important part of the ski industry, just like the snowmaking. Without the groomers, uh, we could put the snow out there, but we couldn't do anything with it once it got into piles. The front blade attachment to move the snow around to, to however we need to. Uh, they have an articulating tiller on the back, uh, which lays down the nice corduroy surface for the skiers to, to ski on. It's also another safeguard against the whimsy of Mother Nature. Uh, unfortunately, in New England, you know, we get the, the, sometimes the warm temperatures in the day and the freezing at night. Uh, that's where our, our grooming equipment comes in, into play, uh, tilling the snow up to a fine puree of, of soft, uh, man-made, machine-groomed uh, snow. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes the trail can be really, uh, really torn up or whatever. As a matter of fact, we were on a trail last night that they uh, were uh, using to race. And within about half an hour, he turned that into the most beautiful surface. I just wanted to get right out of the snowcat and start skiing. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. In Mount Washington Valley, snowmaking and grooming are not limited to the slopes of alpine resorts. Some cross-country centers also make snow, so if you can't wait for the first storm to put on your skis, you don't have to. And even when there hasn't been recent natural snowfall, groomers can rejuvenate the trails, tilling up the surface and laying down perfect corduroy for skate skiing and deep tracks for classic skiing. Of course, you do need cold air to make snow, but being high up in the mountains has its advantages. Uh, I think that for really for a lot of folks who are watching this that maybe don't live in the North Country and don't realize uh, what goes into it, a lot of times we have this thought that in our backyards, if there's not snow, it's not going to be that great at the mountain. From one community to the next, the weather can be very different. One thing we tend to see in the White Mountains all the time is cold air becoming trapped. And what that means is, while the remainder of New England, or at least most of New England, may go to rain, sleet, an icy mix, may see warm air coming in, the White Mountains hold on to that cold. And that means we just continue to crank the snow out. Uh, with the technology especially they have today now, how, how, how defined they can be in terms of making the snow. Uh, it may be bare in your backyard, but they could be making snow whether it was raining at, you know, the night before, as long as the temperature and the conditions are right, it, it is a different world just a few hours away. This has been a brief look at what goes into snowmaking at ski resorts in Mount Washington Valley. Modern technology and the relentless efforts of snowmakers and groomers have made choosing a time to ski less of a gamble. In fact, if it's a cold, crystal clear night, you might want to get in your car right now. Then you can be one of the skiers and riders in the mountains waking up to a man-made powder day.